So there are no major side effects associated with, with these neuromodulation devices. Neuromodulation in terms of headache disorders is to modulate or manipulate the central pain system, which is a complex system, by applying either invasive or non-invasive electrical pulses or magnetic pulses. And then there are several other techniques as well to get to that central pain system. For the treatment of migraine, there are several neuromodulation devices out there. Um, three of them are FDA approved for the treatment of migraine. And, and all the, the three of those, they work very differently. And I can, I'll, I'll give you a brief description of those three. So one of those devices is an external trigeminal nerve stimulator. It's a small device that goes on the forehead and, and gives, uh, produces small electrical pulses that stimulate or trigger the, the trigeminal nerve branches. And, and it uses uh, that road or that gate to get to the central pain system. Um, that's one device. It's FDA approved for the acute treatment of migraine, meaning to stop a migraine attack. And it's FDA approved for the prevention of migraine. Um, the second of the devices that's FDA approved is a, uh, it's a magnetic stimulator. It's called transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS for short. And uh, the full name of the device is Spring TMS or STMS. It's a bigger device. It's about this big and it's applied at the back of the head. Um, the patient puts the device at the back of the head and when they, when they stimulate it, when they trigger it, it produces a magnetic pulse. The magnetic pulse can travel through the skull and stimulate the brain. So as the name suggests, it's transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS, meaning through the skull, magnetic stimulation. The magnetic pulse creates an electrical current when it hits the brain and, and, and thereby it, it triggers um, the target area of the brain. Um, once again, uh, this device is FDA approved for the acute treatment, meaning to stop a migraine attack. As soon as the attack starts, the patients can apply the device can trigger the device and and it has shown that it, it can it, it stops the migraine attacks more than the more than the placebo or the sham devices um, and at the same time it's uh, it can be used to prevent the uh, migraine attacks as a preventive therapy for the long-term treatment of the disease the third device um, that's FDA approved it's only FDA approved for the treatment of acute attacks it's currently being studied for the prevention of migraine uh, that's called vagus nerve stimulator or non-invasive vagus nerve stimulator. The device is this big. It's applied on the vagus nerve, the cervical portion of the vagus nerve, meaning the vagus nerve that crosses the neck. It's applied on the neck and the, the stimulation time is two minutes. That can be repeated uh, a few times as well. And once again, the current use, the current approved use is for the treatment of acute attacks. So it, when the attack starts, to abort the attack or stop the attack, the patients can apply the device on the neck and, uh, and it has shown that it works um, to stop a migraine attack. There are currently trials ongoing for this device to see whether it's helpful in the prevention of migraine attack. There have been studies done which have looked at the, the, the total cost of treatment using devices, neuromodulation techniques uh, versus the standard of care or pharmacological therapy, and, and the costs are not that different. So this perception is a little bit off. Number two, um, as I said, some of these devices are FDA approved for the treatment of migraine. So for some, some patients, they may, they, they may be approved by their health insurance um, as, as well uh, for, the, for the treatment of migraine. And, and number three, we, we, we must remember that for patients and for the society, the cost of untreated migraine or undertreated migraine is far more than the cost of any treatment that's out there. So that's very important. For the clinicians treating uh, patients with migraine or headache, other headache disorders, uh, typically neuromodulation comes into play when the, the patients either are refractory to the, the first line treatments or if the patients are unable to tolerate the first line treatment. And that, that's a good point 
for the for the treating physician to think about non-pharmacological options to think about neuromodulation devices um, I, I would like to point here that it's, it's also important for the treating physicians to know about these devices. There's been a lot of change in the past three or four years, and there's going to be a lot of new options available in the next two or three years as well. So this, uh, the, the, the field of neuromodulation is fast shifting. There are new devices that are being studied. There are new devices that are being approved almost every year now. So it's good to uh, keep up with the options. It's good to know uh, the indications of some of these devices. And, uh, and how to use these devices and so on. Um, so for, for my neurology colleagues, for my primary care colleagues especially, um, I, would, I would strongly recommend that they, they come to the American Headache Society meetings, they attend these meetings, get to know about these new technologies, these new treating options um, that can help their patients.